Hello, everyone. Welcome to my talk. I wanted to give you some updates from the Solidity team. So my name is Eric, and I just joined the team half a year ago. So it's a nice opportunity to actually be here and talk about what we did so far. So first of all, I want to quickly give you an overview um, of what I'm going to talk about. So um, first, I want to uh, introduce some of our new team members to you. Um, then I want to talk about um, the audits that the compiler got. Um, also want to talk about Solidity 050, so which is um, yeah probably what, what you are going to be here. So and then uh, I want to talk about what's coming up, what we're currently working on, and what will be released in um, coming upcoming versions, and also um, how to contribute possibly to the project. So, okay, first of all, what happened to the team? Um, you might know that for the last years, almost like Alex and Christian were um, working on the compiler and on, on the infrastructure, but now we grew the team to seven people in total. So we have another Christian that joined who couldn't, cannot be here, unfortunately. Um, then we have uh, Christian, you might know him. And then we have another Chris that joined, and he is our technical writer, so he is mainly working on the documentation. Uh, then we have Daniel, um, me, and Leo, and we're all working as software engineers in the team. Um, next one, what happened um, with the audits? So um, last year, um, the compiler was audited um, by CoinSpec for Augur. So um, this happened in the end of uh, 2017, and they discovered 10 issues, fixed nine, and um, the last issue is part of the inheritance changes. And you can also find the report um, on Medium. Um, so the second audit um, that uh, we got started in June um, and was done by um, the people from Zeppelin. It was sponsored by the foundation and by Augur. And they worked very closely with us. Um, and they audited a specific compiler version. But um, the issues are being fixed and uh, developed already. And so most of them will be part of 050. Uh, and there's also an interesting talk about that, about the audit itself. Um, it's going to happen tomorrow um, at 1.40 uh, p.m. at the ultraviolet room. And um, it will be done by Manuel from Open Zeppelin, and he will talk about the outcome of this audit. All right, so Solidity 050. Um, we're almost there. So SolC is ready, um, but uh, SolC um, JS, um, there are still some things to be done. But um, we are hoping to get this done in the next days. So yeah, watch out for the new version. Um, and yeah, now I want to talk um, about um, what actually changed um, in the new version. So we had some design goals there. So we wanted to um, improve safety. That was the first and foremost goal. And we wanted to do that by requiring users to be more explicit, by removing disambiguities or weird behavior, and also by adding runtime checks to the compiler. So um, I picked some of the language features, some of the most important ones. So first of all, we um, now have explicit types so, um, and um, explicit vis visibility, explicit data locations, uh, new scoping rules for function local variables. Uh, we have a new constructor syntax. Uh, we also introduced um, emit for events, um, then also um, the address payable and some others. <clears throat> and now I want to, uh, will go through all of them in detail. So explicit types, what that does mean. So um, here's an example of a contract. So um, we have a loop there. And um, this example still uses um, var for variable type. And um, here is an issue, um, because the compiler deduced um, the type of the variable i to an unsigned 8-bit. Uh, and so the maximum is 255, so this condition will um, always be true, which means um, that this will result in an infinite loop. 
So now you have to be more explicit about the type, and var is now disallowed, uh, which means um, you have to um, declare the type of the variable i. <clears throat> and um, now it will be fine. Um, so next thing um, are explicit visibilities. So um, I brought another example here. So um, we have a contract here, and it has an owner. Um, it has a constructor that calls an initialize function. And here in the initialize function, um, the owner will be set, uh, the caller will be the owner, um, the caller of the initialize function. So, and now if um, withdraw is called, there is a require that um, the owner has to be um, the, the caller. Uh, and then um, the balance gets transferred. So the problem here is that um, functions are the visibility of functions um, is public by default. So anyone from outside could call this initialize function. And then also um, the requirement would hold in the withdraw. So could be then also withdrawn. Um, and we change that. So um, the visibility specifier is now mandatory. What does that mean? So here, the, um, the constructor got the visibility public. And the initialized function uh, is now internal, which means it can only be called internally. Um, so uh, that's, uh, and then here you can see that um, the, with, uh, the requirement if someone uh, from our, um, if the withdrawn is called, then um, the requirement um, will be true here. All right, um, explicit data locations. <clears throat> so I brought another example. So here we have a contract, and you have a struct called data. And we have an array um, of these structs and, um, and the function f. And um, here we're going to um, access this, um, this array um, and store it into um, the uh, a variable called member. Um, and as I said, the location specifier is now mandatory. So um, you have to use um, storage here in this case. Um, yeah. OK, um, so storage references. Um, it's the same example that I had before. So um, we still have this struct, we still have this array here, and we have the function. And um, we are um, initializing here a, a member, <coughs> and then um, setting the name that was given as the parameter to the function um, to um, the member name um, of, the, of, uh, of the data. And then we're pushing this um, into the array. Uh, and now they have to be initialized. So the background of this is that we have a component in the compiler that tried to find out if, um, if storage references were initialized before. And because in some cases that was not, not possible, so um, the decision was made to make it explicit so that you have to um, initialize storage members, uh, storage references before using them. Um, all right, so scoping rules. Um, uh, before 050, uh, we had uh, JavaScript-like scoping rules. So in this example, you have the variable i, and um, it's declare um, and uh, the, the th three is assigned to uh, to it before um, it was initialized. Um, and because one of the goals. Um, was to be more explicit. Um, we also changed that to uh, block scoped um, C99 style scoping rules. Um, yeah, and um, so here um, for the two for loops that you can see, um, the, uh, 
uh, i is um, declared also um, in this um, in the for loop and it's visible only for in, in this block so that's the reason why um, you can use uh, you have to redeclare it um, in the second uh, in the second loop um, then we introduce a new constructor syntax so um, what does that mean? Um, this is an, an old example. So um, I, took the, um, I took the contract that you've seen before. So um, here you can see um, the contract is called old. And before 050, um, to define a constructor, you had to, use, um, uh, had to declare a function with the same name as the contract. Um, but um, again, to be more explicit, about that um, and to um, prevent mistakes, um, we introduced a new keyword called constructor. And um, it has to be used to, de to declare the constructor. And um, it's not allowed anymore to have a constructor that has the same name um, as the contract. Um, what next? So, uh, emit for events. Um, here again, um, the, the example that you've seen before. So, we have a contract here, and um, it has an event called withdrawn. Um, and so, we have the function withdraw. Um, it's from, from the example before. So, uh, we have the require again, and we have the um, transfer call, and then the, emit, uh, the event is emitted. Um, but this can also be confusing, because it could also be a function call. I mean, there are coding guidelines that um, say that you should start your function with a lowercase letter. But if you don't do, so this can, there, there can be certain mistakes be making. Um, and again, to be more explicit, event invocations must be prefixed. So um, here um, we introduce the emit keyword. And um, if you want to um, invoke this event, emit has to be put in front of this. All right, um, next one, address payable. So um, we uh, split um, the address type. So um, in this example, you have um, a target, and you want to transfer uh, one ether and call transfer on this target. And now um, address payable is required. So um, that means that if you have an address type that is not payable, the transfer function would not be available on this type. <coughs> Um, then there's a, a second example um, of uh, implicit or explicit casts. So um, if you want to um, convert this to an address type, um, you need to be explicit about it. So um, you have to use a, um, a fallback function, a payable fallback function, so um, that this, um, such that this example uh, would compile. So, and then there are a few other things that we changed. So, um, we have the ABI encode and decode changes, and also uh, some changes to the call family. So, call, delegate call, KJAC 256, now take a single byte parameter. And um, if, you want to, um, if you want to use it, then you have to call, um, uh, you have to use the ABI encoder before to uh, encode and decode. Um, the arguments there. Um, and also, um, we changed something to the view, view pure and uh, view pure functions um, now use steady call with the exception that for library view functions, um, they use delegate call. And we also put together um, a list of breaking changes. Um, you can find it in our documentation. And we also put together um, um, or compile the list of how you have to change your contracts such that they will compile with uh, 050. 
Okay, um, so what's, what's coming up with the next versions? Um, we have Fuel, which is a very interesting topic I want to talk about. We uh, introduced um, some formal verification in form of the SMT checker. Um, we're planning to do some inheritance rule changes, um, then also contract metadata and the ABI encoder v2. So what is Yule? I don't know if um, uh, who of you attended to Alex's talk yesterday and the Prism Room. Um, so Yule is an assembly language and it's an intermediate representation internally in the compiler. Um, it aids auditing the code base and generated code. Um, it allows for a lot of optimization um, and it also allows multiple backends. So, um, Solidity could compile to Yule and then in the end to um, EVM. Um, and also Solidity to Yule to eWASM. That will be something um, that might be interesting in the future. And also Viper could, um, and that's to emphasize, use Yule to also then um, support EVM or eWASM backend. Um, and if you want to find out more about Yule, um, you can also consult our documentation. Or, um, yeah. And I also brought a short example um, so that you get an idea of how Yule does look, uh, look like. And here is the power function. And we have um, high level, um, high level. Uh, Keywords like switch, case, default, um, but we can also, but uh, as you can also see, um, multiplication um, and also dividing. Um, there, it's a representation of opcodes and a more functional style. So, like I said before, this helps, re uh, this increases um, readability and also helps auditing the code. Um, and if you want to find, more about, uh, find out more about Yule and also about the optimization that I talked about, then I would highly recommend you to um, join the talk today um, by Christian. It's at 4.30 p.m. in Prism, and he will talk about um, the optimization that we put in um, already and um, also um, some things that we plan to do in the future. Um, all right, um, so coming to formal verification. Um, so we're using a um, technique called SMT, Satisfiability Modulo Theories, and this helps seamless verification of safety properties, such as underflow, overflow, division by zero, um, trivial conditions or unreachable code and also assertions, so verifying runtime checks at compile time. And we have a component for that, and it's called the SMT checker. Um, so this is one example. So um, you can enable, um, the SMT checker is an experimental feature right now, and you can enable it uh, using a Pragma, here Pragma experimental SMT checker. And so if you compile this example with the SMT checker enabled, you will get some warnings. So um, the first warning is that the for loop condition is always true. So i is um, initialized with 200, and that means that if um, i is uh, greater or uh, equal zero, this condition will always be true. So that's the first warning. Um, and the second warning is an underflow resulting in a value less than zero. And um, this is if I then gets incremented. So at some point, you will get uh, an underflow here. Um, skip this example. And there's also a talk um, by our colleague Leo. Uh, colleague Leo and it will happen tomorrow at 4 p.m. Uh, on the ultraviolet stage. Uh, and he will talk about um, some details on how to actually use the SMT checker. Um, what's coming up? So uh, we're planning to do some inheritance rule changes. 
Uh, and uh, so inheritance is a crucial part of solidity contracts, but there are some open questions. So what about explicit shadowing? Um, can visibility or state mutability levels change? And there is an open pull request right now where a lot of discussion is happening. And um, so we're hoping to get more people join this discussion so that we will come up um, with a cohesive, set, a cohesive set of rules um, that we can implement. Um, what else? So contract metadata. Um, uh, contract metadata is uh, generated for each contract and it stores as a JSON object. And um, it contains all details needed to reproduce um, the compilation. And um, a swarm hash of this metadata is appended to the, to the bytecode. Um, unfortunately, it's not used by um, a lot of verification tools that are out there yet. Um, and um, you can find the documentation about the metadata also um, in our documentation. Um, and this is how um, the contract metadata will look like. So um, you have a, the contract version, you have the language, so Solidity, you um, have the compiler version is included, and also some settings um, like the um, compilation target, EVM version, uh, and if the optimizer was enabled or disabled, because this uh, will result in um, different um, output. Uh, and uh, here you can see the hashes that I mentioned, um, and this is then included. Um, so then the ABI encoder v2. Uh, what is the ABI? So we have a contract ABI, and that's the specification how um, to exchange data with a contract. And for each public function, a decoder or encode and encoder is generated. Currently, that's handwritten C++ code, and um, it's, er it's very error-prune, and um, it's hard to test. Um, so that's why we introduced um, the ABI encoder v2, and this is written in Yule, and it ensures safety properties, uh, such as um, short input, too short input, or uh, invalid values. And it also supports complex data types, such as structs, multidimensional arrays. And you can also play around with the new ABI encoder and enable it via Pragma, via uh, experimental Pragma. All right. Um, so, and then um, I want to quickly tell you how you could potentially contribute to the project. So there are many ways to, to contribute. So um, you can always request um, a feature. We have discussions on existing design issues um, and also including um, documentation improvements and also the examples that we have in the documentation. Um, we, uh, in our issue tracker, we have uh, introduced some labels. Um, for example, help wanted or good first issue. So if you go through all the open issues and see the labels, then you can probably directly start working on it if you want to. Um, and also you should watch out for um, Gitcoin bounties. Um, or, and if you have any questions about, them, uh, about that, you can always reach out to the Solidity dev channel. Um, yeah, and now we have some time for questions, if there are any. So um, I think there are two microphones here in front of the stage. Um, okay. The, doesn't look like there are any questions, so don't worry if they, thank you. Oh, there's a question. Uh, hello. Um, so currently, uh, if you declare that your solidity function oh, returns, can you hear me? Uh, not so well, sorry. Beep, 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 hello. 
Okay, okay. Okay, sorry. So currently in Solidity Functions, if you declare a return uh, variable that the function returns something and don't explicitly declare a return, uh, there's no notices or, or errors about that. Are there any plans to change that for Solidity? Um, not that I know of. I mean, my, the team is also sitting there, so uh, if you want to add something to that. Yeah, I mean, there's an, I think there's an open issue about that. Um, we do warn if the variable is not used at all. So if you never assign to it and do not have a return statement, then you get a warning. Okay. Okay. But yeah, we're, yeah, there's an open discussion about how, to, how and whether to change that. I have one more, um, one more question. So currently, the function identifiers for the way that, like, how they're identified when you're calling them, they only check the, they only have the name and the parameters in the identifier hash, right? Um, but this can allow where you can call a function that actually returns something or doesn't return something when you expect it to, and even though it should error in that sense, it doesn't because the identifier only checks the name and the parameters. Are there any plans to include the return variables into the function identifiers or no? Mm. Yeah, that's something that hit some people at the point where the compiler was changed to actually enforce the return size. Okay. Um, that's a very tough thing to change because, mm, uh, yeah, right. I mean, okay. the ABI is something you don't really want to touch. Yeah, I, I also see this one and I know you should have done that like that in the beginning, but yeah. <laughs> okay, all right, thank you. Hello, uh, I'm currently using ABI Encoder version 2 to handle complex structure, which is a very nice feature to have in Solidity. Mm -hmm. uh, you say it's on your roadmap for the next, uh, next step. Uh, however, I, my question is how dangerous it is to use a current experimental version and how long do you have to wait to have a proof uh, solution for that? Um, for the ABI uh, Encoder v2, you mean? Yes. Um, so maybe like one one part of your question was missing because like um, can you can maybe repeat the question? Yeah, missed? just I'm using it right now, uh, but it's still experimental. So I want to know if it's dangerous to use that in production, and if it's uh, dangerous and it might change. When will I have a good version that I can deploy on the mainnet? Um, I mean that's hard to say. So it's an experimental feature, so I wouldn't recommend to use this in production at all. Um, and because we have so many things going on, um, it's hard to say when this will be ready. Um, but maybe Christian has an addition to that. Yeah, so we're pretty confident that it's uh, not dangerous to use. The, one of the m main reasons it's still experimental is because it's much more expensive. So uh, the ABI, the new ABI coder was built in an extremely modular way where we have uh, tiny functions for very simple tasks and that helps ensure that it's, it's correct, but uh, it's more expensive because the EVM jumps around all the time. And if you want to, so, and we will take it out of experimental as soon as we have the UL optimizer that will, uh, yeah, remove these inefficiencies, basically. Can I, can I ask a question? Hi, um, so Solidity uh, 0.5 has a lot of breaking changes, right? It's a mm -hmm. Lack of backwards compatibility. Um, I've got contracts that are already deployed to the chain using previous versions of Solidity, um, and I'm running into some challenges trying to interact with those contracts using 0.5 um, because of the things, the way that they were written back in the day using, you know, const and, you know, various other bits and pieces. Do you guys, have you thought about how to write code in 0.5 to integrate, to interact with existing contracts? Is that a thing that you've thought about, or are you, are you expecting that everyone's just going to write all new contracts going forward? Mm, no, I mean, of course, we are expecting um, this, that you um, have contracts compiled with different compiler versions. And so, um, I mean, there, there's a plan for that. So, to... Okay. All right. okay. Um, sorry, Eric. Um, I just have one addition to that. Yeah. Um, probably the best way to do it, if you write an interface uh, for your contract, and that the interface is valid in 050. Um, that's probably the best way. Uh, hello, thank you for the presentation. Uh, so currently Solidity is 0 0.5, which is uh, alpha software. What do you think will, will it take to be, for Solidity to become um, 1.0 software? Um, you mean in terms of time? Or 
Mm, I mean, that's, 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 that's really hard to say. I mean, because, like I said, I just joined the project half a year ago, and I joined it when it was in version uh, 0422. So now we're at 050. So it might take a while, but it's really hard to say when it's like in version uh, 1.0. Um, but Thank you. So, I mean, yeah, I, I joined the project only four years ago, and I think it might still take some time to get to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. Uh, I, have, uh, I think the time is up, but maybe we have still one more question. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I would like to ask about uh, the capability of the language in terms of returning uh, multi dimension arrays like array of struct or array of uh, strings. And also about the capability of the string data type that has a limitation in terms of getting the length or uh, doing some sorts of concatenation. Mm -hmm. So um, the question was when this will be changed. Yes. I mean, um, yeah, the, the point, like your question about multidimensional arrays, this um, will be included in the new ABI encoder. So if you want to interact with the contract, um, and then if this component is finished, it should be, you should be able to use them. And how about uh, adding the capability to the string data type? Um, you mean um, regarding the, the length and conc concatenation? Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, is there anything that we plan for uh, for that in the future? Sorry, I have to refer to my so, colleagues. Um, is it working? Sorry. Is it working now? Yeah. yeah. Um, we're kind of reluctant to add features that have unbounded gas usage, and string concatenation would be one of them. But uh, you can use abi.encode packed on byte arrays that will do exactly byte array uh, concatenation, which is something we <laughs> discovered by accident, or yeah, <laughs> it's a neat trick. Yeah. All right, cool, yeah, thank you a lot.